All right, guys, it is time for the Kentucky Derby, and we've talked all about the really good horses with a chance, right? But they like to throw us some curveballs. There's some fresh faces in here that we're going to have to talk about. Lucky, I've got some help. I've got long shot winner, mind that bird, 50 to 1. I've got long shot winner, Giacomo, 50 to 1. And I've got long shot winner who never actually crossed the finish line first, but still got put up and no one remembers who he is. Country House, 65 to 1. Because of those horses today, we are going to just talk about the horses who you might automatically toss or maybe whose names you don't even know. In case you don't remember, um, last week we kind of talked about King Fury being right on the verge of getting in, even though after he won the Lexington, he was like number 32 on the list. Well, King Fury is in the starting gate, in spot 16 most precisely. And I think of some of these long shots that you don't actually know, King Fury might be the horse you want to know. Now, I didn't bet on Giacomo, and I didn't bet on Mind That Bird. However, I did have a nice bet on Country House, who, by the way, is the second largest price to win the Kentucky Derby. Now, again, he did not cross the finish line in front, but he got put up and I still was able to cash a ticket. So if there's going to be one of these crazy horses that, you know, are in this race that you've never heard of, King Fury might be that one. Why? Um, because he's a fresh horse coming in here. He also runs decently enough at Churchill Downs. In case you don't remember who he was, this is the horse that won Lexington in the slop. Remember, he was slipping and sliding through that first turn and then made the sustained run up the rail to win. Um, he was uh, ran behind or he won the street sense, finishing in front of Superstock, who would go on to win the Arkansas Derby and people are talking about. And I think King Fury has been working very well for his connections, including trainer Kenny McPeak. So of these Random horses that get in the Kentucky Derby at the very last minute. He might be your best chance if you are looking for a horse to maybe make it onto the index cards for next year. Uh, the other horse is Keep Me in Mind for Robertino Diodoro. Now, this colt was solid at two. He won the Kentucky Jockey Club. He was third in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile. Uh, he was second in the Breeders' Futurity. But... His three-year-old campaign has not gone to plan. He came off the break and he ran really flat first time out. But we can say, we're going to give you an excuse. It was a flat race off the layoff. Not every horse is ready to go fresh. He came back in the bluegrass and uh, he was beat 16 lengths by essential quality. So immediately I just say, toss. But Robertino has now said that they tried some different tactics in there, that they let this horse be closer, and it just means that he had nothing left in the tank, right? You guys play Gallop Racer, so you have, like, this much gas. Well, if you use all your gas early at the finish, when you go to whip, your horse's, you know, ears turn backwards and your gauge turns red and the horse goes backwards. So they think maybe that was the case for him, and they're not going to take him out of his game for the Derby. They're going to let him come from behind. Uh, however, they signaled their alertness for the Derby with a 46-1 and one work at Churchill Downs. That is really fast. That's a fast sprinter work. That would be a fast work for the horses in the Pat Day Mile. That's a fast work for the, you know, the older fillies lining up for the distaff. I mean, that's a fast work. So now you want him to go a mile and a quarter off that fast work. Oh, I just don't know. I love the Adora and I love that team there. This horse would really shock me. But here he is in the race and... As uh, these horses all say, you can't count out every single horse in the race. So keep me in mind. I might do so from thing number four, but I will not put you on my tickets. And finally, the last horse to make it into the field. This could have a little bit of a feel-good story, and that is Brooklyn Strong. I'm sure a lot of people just love the name already. But this is where Umberto Rispoli lands. We all know he originally had them out on Rock Your World. He got the boot for regular rider Joel Rosario to climb back aboard this horse. Um, and Rispoli was sad. Everyone is sad for Rispoli and they're thinking, you know, you get a good horse, what happens? Are we gonna find you a horse? They found him a horse. Now, um, Brooklyn Strong did break his maiden for 40, but not impossible for a for former maiden claimer to cross the wire front in the Kentucky Derby. Uh, he also won the grade two Remsen. However, it was in the slop. I mean, I'm not gonna guarantee anything about Kentucky weather. But the weather forecast right now, I do not see any rain. Should it rain, Brooklyn Strong, King Fury, both of these guys might like that because they've both won on an off track before. Um, his lone start in 2021, he is coming in here with just one race. He ran in the wood 
and he was fifth that day. He's got, you know, some lesser known connections, Danny Velasquez, and, um, you know, overall just don't have the huge number of horses that say Todd Pletcher or Brad Cox do. Doesn't mean you don't deserve a shot, but this horse would have to be uber strong and would really surprise me if he jumped up, but at least nice to meet you, Brooklyn Strong. Now we know all these crazy long shot horses. So the question is, who do we like? Who do we like at the Kentucky Derby, right? We hate to be the favorite person, right? Chalk eater. But essential quality does tick pretty much all the boxes. And with the exception of the last two years, which were freak years, you know, authentic winning in September and the year before that with maximum security getting DQ'd and country house being put up, six prior years all in a row, boom, 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 favorites won this race. So there is a good chance the favorite yet again can do it in essential quality. But that's definitely not going to be the best way to make money, especially because I'm hearing that Mattress Mac is going to bet like $4 million on him. I mean, his price is just going to go. Pfft. So let's try and make some money. Okay. I think you must use Hot Rod Charlie. I loved his work too back. I loved his last race. I love the way he shipped. I like the way he's coming in. I saw him galloping today. He was like having a little blowout down the backside. I think he's coming in here in really peak form. So I think he's a must use. I'm hoping we get around his eight to one, but I'm thinking that he might end up like closer to five to one. Speaking of five to one, Rock Your World is going to be around there. And at first I really liked Rock Your World because I like the Santa Anita Derby a lot, but now I'm like kind of backing myself off the Rock Your World bandwagon. Um, we'll cheer for Costa if this horse wins. I think that's great. He's a big, beautiful horse, but I'm a little concerned with what he's going to do, right? He's in the 15 hole now. And while you're thinking that's a good spot because you're outside, you kind of go and then you work your way over. But highly motivated is outside of him and he's going to want to show speed. Automatically, that's going to mean either he has to go faster or he's going to have to let that horse cross over in front of him. Either way, I think he's going to be parked a little wide because you're not going to necessarily want to put him behind horses. A, I think he gets a little bit um, rank if he's going to be behind because in the morning he tugs up to even get even with his workmate. And B, I am concerned with the dirt in my face scenario for a horse who's only run on dirt one time. So I'm just kind of like pulling myself back and, and like putting a real hard check on my liking Rock Your World. However, Medina Spirit, I'm liking more and more. There's no Cattle River in the race, okay? Cattle River, remember we looked last week and Travis thought that's gonna be our lone speed. There's no Cattle River. Now, I've been wanting Medina Spirit to go back to the lead. This is your opportunity. Please go to the front. Medina Spirit is drawn lovely in hole eight. I think he breaks, I think he can gun, and then he can just relax. He can be our pace setter. I would love to see that. We saw authentic go gate to wire for Baffert last year, a little bit under the radar. I think Medina Spirit, that would be his best chance to win. So I'm gonna hope he goes to the front and never looks back. So Medina Spirit's a must use. Um, I just want you guys, as everyone's been talking about Midnight Bourbon, I talked about Midnight Bourbon last week. I love the way he's been working. I think he looks great. He is a super happy and proud of himself horse. Please hold all wagers. Please hold all wagers until they like literally make it onto the racetrack. Already in training, this horse has gotten loose in the morning. He ran around the muck pit. He didn't go anywhere or hurt himself. It's like he just wants to be naughty. He is like the bad boy of Derby Week. He schooled in the paddock yesterday or the day before, and he was a handful. He came over with two handlers. He uh, decided he wanted to try out the turf course. He's trampled all over the flowers. He walked in with two handlers. He left with Steve Asmussen. That's like when your uh, your kid has to have daddy pick him up from preschool because he's pushing everybody on the playground and daddy walks out holding his hand really tight. I'm a little concerned with those antics and what they're going to mean for him on Derby Day. There were like 50 people tops leaning on the rail there that day that uh, Midnight Bourbon was schooling and he was so amped up and nuts. What's he going to do when 20,000 people are shouting his name? I'm so concerned. So I'm literally going to like, hold my midnight bourbon wager and watch and see if he loses all of his juice in the paddock or if he saves some for the racetrack and if he does use him on the bottom of my exotics um i'm chucking out highly motivated i liked his work i just don't think he's good enough now though because essential quality already beat him once and he's really gonna have to use some gas from the get-go um i've also heard although i have not seen myself this is all hearsay 
uh, that he is not galloping as fluidly after his last work, which again, I really did like. Um, and the horse that's been training fantastically is Mandalu. No excuse for his last race. Not sure what happened. Brad has no excuse. I don't mind that. Horses sometimes just have bad days, like people do. Um, but if you're talking about the horse that is training on the muscle, that's your boy right there. And that's 15 to 1. So, oh, that's, yeah, I have no idea what I'm going to do. You either? Great. Well, I hope that I can help you there anyways. At least now you know some of the other horses that are joining the field. You know what I feel about some of the favorites, who to hold back on, maybe who to send on. And if you are that player out there that doesn't want to handicap and you just want to play with your heart, may I suggest Friday, the Kentucky Oaks, that's a day to play with your heart. That field is so evenly matched. Legitimately, every horse could win that race. You can throw horses out of the Derby. I feel like you can't throw any horse out of the Oaks. So you want to play grandma's birthday or your kid's favorite number or uh, how many drinks you have before you hit the floor. Oaks day. That is your day, my friend. So, Thank you guys for joining me here on Stop and Smell My Roses, brought to you by My Racehorse. It was very fun to be going through these last couple of weeks with you. I hope you enjoyed it as well. We'll have one more episode after this to see how we did. Are we going to get a new index card? Are we going to put someone on the bandwagon? Yes, we'll wait and see. Bye, guys. Have a great derby.